Hi, I'm June Mellinger, sewing expert and educator. You know, everybody wants to help everyone else today, and that's a good thing. And there's lots of ways to do that with charity sewing. Friends will tell you, you know, I could use some care caps to help people that might have lost their hair when they're being cared for. And uh, there are lots of great places to get patterns, including the website for It's So Easy, where you can download links to find out how to make those care caps. In fact, the one that we have here, we even added some great embroidery to. So if you have a special uh, message that you'd like to put on the cap or a cute little picture, you can do that as well with your embroidery machine. Another thing that people also like to do is get involved with making blankets. Project Lioness is a nationwide program for children, and um, people will often gather together to make Linus, Project Linus blankets at their, whether they're in their churches or sewing stores, etc. And they have some great patterns on the site as well as on our site as well. And uh, you're usually using a flannel or a polar fleece or some of those softer fabrics. In fact, there are even some. Uh, complete kits that you can purchase on the Linus site as well. And when you make those uh, great uh, blankets, they're often donated uh, to perhaps police stations or other area drop-off areas that make sure that children who really need something soft when they're getting settled down and they have that blanket. Another really interesting part of the uh, Project Linus program now is weighted blankets. Do you know that there are children that are challenged by autism or sensory processing uh, challenges, as well as maybe ADD or ADHD? And those kids really need something that settles them down. And it turns out that a weighted blanket does just that. And so I thought I'd show you how that works. Now, there are even some churches that make these, and they make the blankets, but they charge a little bit for it because they need to buy supplies. But uh, they're not inexpensive sometimes to purchase. So I thought making them would be an interesting idea for you. What I discovered was one of the ideas was to use a children's pillowcase. And so you can see that you can shop in the stores and pick up pillowcases quite frequently uh, at a very nice price. And uh, all you have to do is take the pillowcase and fold it in half and in half again lengthwise to start out. I've got this pinned. You can press it in place or you can use your marking tools such as your chalks and so forth to just mark these long channels, if you will. And are you going to need the channels marked on the lengthwise? And in this case, we just folded the pillowcase in half several times and showed the markings that way. Another thing to do after that is that you have to fill each of those channels with some plastic pellets. And the pellets need to be secured in each channel and uh, then evenly distributed after they're set in the channels. It's not too hard at all to get them set in those channels. In fact, what I did was I just went through the kitchen and I found a funnel that had a nice wide opening. And you can see how I can comfortably hold the funnel over the channel. And then I have some plastic pellets that I purchased just for this purpose. Now there's a recipe for this, actually. They're stating that children feel best if they have about, um, let's see, it's one pound of pellets for every 10 pounds of weight. So if you have a 20 pound child, an infant and so forth, you want to have two packages of pellets for that pill, uh, blanket that you make for the child. And so this is a good place to start out. So, and it helps you really understand how the whole process works. So you can see, as I pour this into the funnel, I put about a cup of pellet, pellets into each, for each baffle. It's filled it up nicely. That's pretty simple, what do you think? Now I have each of the channels filled, and you can see how they're filled nicely here. The next step is that I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and make sure that I have the top panel sewed shut so that none of the pellets will fall out for the processes after this. Now, um, I need to sew just about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric, and that's not too hard to do. And on this machine, I do have a light that I could follow to determine the edge. I can also use the edge of my presser foot, or I can also use um, my guide. There are quilting guides that people use as well for reference tools. So you can see how easy it is to just sew across the top here. And the next part you're going to really find quite interesting. 
I also know that there's been a lot of other research on other ways that people can make these items so that uh, the children can feel secure as well. And one of the things is a vest. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So I have this all sewed shut at the top. I'm going to come back to the table here so I can show you what's going on. You can remember that each of the, the baffles here were sewed so that you have uh, in this case, eight even channels. And you can see the pillowcase is the perfect palette for this. So the next thing you do is get out, you get out one of your, um, perhaps a yardstick, or in this case, we have a nice plexiglass ruler here. And I simply have kind of organized all the pellets into the lower part of the pillowcase. And I filled each of the channels evenly. Now I want to separate them in half, if you will. So I just move my ruler to here and I simply pick up the pillowcase this way, and I then simply lift this, and as I lift it, the, cha the remaining pellets are falling down to the bottom of the pillowcase, and you can see them all resting there. And the next step is that I have to take this and actually fold it in half and sew right down the center of the pillowcase. So we're going to start here, and you're going to remember you want to do a reinforcement stitch. You can see I have this guide light set on the machine, so that's what's shining there. And I'm going to press my reinforcement stitch to bring myself back to the edge, and then I'm going to move forward. And as I do this process, it's, um, you know, you have to be cautious because you want to be sure that there are no beads that are going to get in the way of your path of sewing. If they do, you just simply lift up your presser foot and uh, get them out of the way and off you go. And as you're working on a project like this, you can think about other ways that you can help people as well. So here we are. You can see that my light is giving me a path to follow here. And when we are done, we're gonna do another reinforcement stitch at the end, just to be sure that everything is going to be contained in each channel. Then I go back to my uh, sewing table and I do the same thing all over again. But this time, I'm only working with half of the beads. So you can see how they've shifted. Each one has shifted down to the edge of the path. And again, I could fold it in half, get a reference point, and keep on sewing. So, um, that's another charity item that we can work with. I've even heard about uh, gals that have collected um, camo cloth, if you will, and they make cute little vests for kids, and the vests are, have uh, weights in them so that uh, it makes the child fe feel secure while they're sitting down and playing. In fact, my daughter-in-law even told me that some of the kids in school use those as well. So that's, it's kind of interesting. There's lots of different ways to help people out. Now, another thing that we were talking about was being visual about helping your friends. We have people that will make t-shirts that have a great iconic symbol on them or even caps. And you know, it never fails when you want to do something like that, that you're not just making one. You have to make a lot of caps. And that can be a little bit uh, of a challenge to cut out the shape over and over. So over here, we found that if we had some uh, vinyl iron-on uh, vinyl iron-on fabric, we could then simply apply that to a cap. So I went to a digital cutting machine and I said, let me put in, in this case, the letter J. And I said, I have a piece of vinyl here and I could make 24 J's in no time flat. So I simply press the J, I press the OK key, cut, and it does the rest for me. So while that's cutting, I'd be able to get my caps in place and make sure they were all marked so that the item would be um, ironed in the same place over and over. So this is just finished cutting, so I'm gonna get the spatula so that we can easily slip that under the item that we've just cut out, pop it off the surface here. Let's see how this is working. There we go. And it just pops off the surface. It's kind of like taking cookies off the cookie sheet. And then I simply have the next item that I'm ready to apply for my cap for the next uh, um, care walk that we might be involved in. So what I'm going to do, I want to be able to take this over to my cap and I want to be sure that it will be placed exactly where I need it to be. And then I'm going to take a hot iron and I'm going to apply that to the front of the letter J. 
then when I feel that's secured, I then will turn the cap over inside out and apply more heat to the reverse side of the cap. And when I'm all done, I'll be able to peel off, I know this is away from the cap, but I'll be able to, able to peel off the adhesive protection surface here and I'll have a great new image from the next cap for the next charity event that I want to be involved with. So whether you're sewing or crafting, there's always someone that wants to be helped out and you'll be ready to do that.